so we begin with with the net present value net present value net present value is a discounted cash flow approach to capital budgeting we've already mentioned that right now what is the net present value look at this net present value is the present value of the cash inflows all the inflow so i'll put in money today today and over 5 years i will get in so today i put in 1 million dollars over a span of 5 years then maybe at the end of first year i get 100000 at the end of second second year uh, i get maybe <coughs> maybe 800000 third year i get 900000 fourth year 500 whatever so i get different cash flows over the next 5 years what is the present value of all these cash inflows when i talk of cash inflows we will have revenues uh, less operating expenses the net cash inflow the present value of the cash inflows minus the present value of the cash outflows correct that will give you the net present value so in cash inflow minus cash outflow normal thing the only thing is it's a discounted technique therefore you don't just take cash inflow minus cash outflow we we'll look at the present value of the cash inflow present value of cash outflow is usually the initial investment and not anything more but if there is anything more it does not matter that can also be computed if i make an expenditure at the end of the fourth year expenditure at the end of the fourth year we have to find out the present value of that expenditure clear <clears throat> this is usually the investment this is the net inflow every year say for example you have operating expenses right uh, operating revenues operating expenses the difference the difference <coughs> will give us will give us a, we don't include depreciation because depreciation is a is a not a cash expense it's a non cash expense so we add back the debt we don't consider depreciation as an expense we are not looking at cash inflows what is the acceptance criterion 5 now i find out the a net present value maybe the net present value is is $20000 or it's $100000 or it's a $500000 so what what do we conclude right that's the acceptance criteria when do you accept a project we accept the project if the npv is zero or positive it is accepted we prefer it to be positive if it is zero also we accept mind you this does not mean that we are not making any profit because because when we look at this present values it is at a certain rate of return it's at a certain discount rate right so if you are looking at 12% at 12% if your cost of capital is 12% only then there is no actual addition to the uh, to the profit but there is a return mind you 12% return we are getting <coughs> clear if of course the net present value is negative the project is rejected now what if you have two or three mutually exclusive projects right <clears throat> and you need to choose any one which one will you choose do you choose the one with the highest net present value or the least net present value we choose the one obviously with the highest net present value the one with the higher npv is selected clear that is all there is to the npv net present value let us look at an example with equal cash flows now the management is considering the purchase of an equipment for 120000 this will increase the cash flows by 44000 every year the equipment will have a life of 6 years no salvage value the management wants a return of 20% on its investments now what do i do so at the end of each year i will get 44000 so one option is i To look at the present value the first table i showed you for each year we can see 44000 if i get what is the present value second year what is the present value third year what is the present value and then add up but the shorter thing that same thing is summarized in what the pv ifa because these are equal cash flows right the net cash flows are meant to be 44000 correct so i refer to the annuity table and find out what is the discount factor for 6 years at the rate of 20% it is given to you to you here i'll also show it to you in the table see there is an extract of the table this is 20% right 1 2 3 4 5 6 years you see this 3.3255 it's given to you in the question otherwise you will refer to the tables take this what is the meaning of this the meaning of this 3.3255 is that if you receive 1 dollar at the end of 
each year for six years and you're going to discount that at 20 percent then the value of those six dollars that you have received is only 3.3255 therefore what is the value of the 44,000 that you will receive yes or no what is the uh, present value of the 44,000 that you will receive correct so can I say the present value of the of the 44,000 that I received, 44,000 into 3.325, 146,320. Is this the net present value? No. What is this? This is the present value of the cash inflows. What is the present value of the cash outflow? It is just one, 120,000 investment. Initial investment is at year zero. There the multiple is immediate. There the multiple is. So today, dollar one is equal to dollar one. So I multiply into one. There is there is no other discount factor. It's as, as of now, the time value. There is no time value. You're doing it immediately, correct? Therefore, you get 120,000. What is the difference? 26,320 is the, is, the, is the net present value, correct? This is the net present value. Now, since the management is considering, do you think the management should go ahead with it? Yes. Why? Sorry. Why? Because the NPV is positive, the equipment should be purchased. The equipment should be purchased. Clear? Yeah. Now, if you have unequal cash flows, the initial outlay is 80,000, estimated life is 5 years, and profit after tax is end of year 1, 6,000, year 2, 14,000, year 3, 24,000, year 4, 16,000, and year 5, nothing. Correct? So it's, uh, yeah, this is, these are the cash flows, unequal cash flow. Depreciation has been calculated. No, it's not the cash flow. I'm sorry, students. Is this the cash flow? No, it's the profit. The profit after tax at the end of year 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. Depreciation has been calculated uh, under straight line method and we need to compute the net present value if the cost of capital is taken as 10% per annum and the present value of rupee 1, the present value of rupee 1, sorry students, the present value of dollar 1 at 10% per annum is 0 0.91, 0 0.88, 0 0.75, 0 0.68 and 0 0.62, <coughs> right? <coughs> what do we do now? So we make a table, why? We make a table saying this is year 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Initial investment is made in year 0. 80,000 is the outflow of cash discount factor of, of 1. So it is dollars 80,000. Next, uh, 6,000, 14,000, 24,000, 16,000 and nil, right? Now what is your depreciation? Depreciation is 80,000 divided by 5. Right, so we get 16,000 is the depreciation, this is the profit after tax. Now we add back the depreciation and we get cash inflows of uh, 22, these are cash inflows. This was profit after tax, adding back depreciation because depreciation is not a cash flow. So your cash flow that is, is 22, 30, 40, 32, right, and 16,000. Discount factors have been given on top or you refer to the, just look at the PV table student so that you are sure about this. So you understand this discount factor. Then we multiply this. Yes or no? Because if you get $1 at the end of year 1, the value is 0 0.91. Therefore, if you get 22,000, it is 22,000 into 0 0.91 equal to 20,000. Correct? So this is minus, this is plus, add up, you get $26.00. 637 $26.637. Since the net present value is positive, the project may be undertaken. You've got 26637 These are the inflows less the outflow, right? Now, it's the same thing, only the capital, uh, the discount factor has changed to 20%. Everything else is the same. Then what happens? The, the cash flows do not change, right? Inici this is the initial investment. This is the depreciation. These will become the cash inflows. This is, of course, an outflow, right? That's why it's written in minus. Discount factors have changed, right? Discount factors have changed. These are higher at 20%. The discounted cash flows, <coughs> these are at 20%. Sorry. 
should I say higher? I should have said it's lower, right? In the sense that the, the, the higher the discount rate you use, the lower becomes your present value, correct? Mm -hmm. Today's value, if I'm receiving it after one year, it's still less. Now, when I do look at this, my net present value has come down from 26,000 something to 4177. The only change is the rate of discount. Here also the NPV is positive and the project is undertaken. But look at the big difference because of the difference in the discount rate. From 10%, we doubled it, we said it would be 20%. If the company wanted to return 20%, then also of course it will accept the project. But the, the NPV is only 4177. <coughs> Thus for computing the NPV, we can use the present value interest factor of an annuity, right? This factor, if the cash inflows are the same, cash inflows are equal year after year. If they are unequal, then we have to use the PVIF tables. And of course, higher the discount rate, lower will be the net present value. Cash outflows are usually at the beginning of the project and therefore they are not discounted. We use multiple one. I have discussed all this before also. I hope you are thoroughly clear students. Okay. The discount rate chosen. What is the discount rate? You can call it the rate of return, the cost of capital, the, the, the hurdle rate. The discount rate is usually, it is the weighted average cost of capital. Weighted average cost of capital. So sometimes if you see this term, don't be confused. It's the weighted average cost of capital or the return from alternative investments. It's usually the weighted average cost of capital. So my cost of capital, what is the cost of capital? What is my capital? It will be equity paid debt. What is the cost of equity? What is the cost of debt? I make a weighted average of the cost and arrive at a at the weighted average cost of capital. So usually they use that as the hurdle rate or the discount rate. Or if I can put this money in an alternative investment, I would have earned 10%. Therefore, at least 10% I should earn here. And therefore, that becomes the, the discount rate. Clear? Higher the discount rate, of course, lower the NPV. Lower the discount rate, higher will be the net present value. If you are clear on that. Now, greater the risk element in a project, higher should be the discount rate. This also we have discussed before. Remember, uh, so, uh, even if I wanted 12%, but it's a very risky project, then I better put it put it as 15%. So that I'll, 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 I have to earn that. It's a riskier project. Obviously, I need higher returns. In order to take the risk of venturing into this particular riskier project. Correct? Now, we could make a graph, just like we did this 10%, 20%. We could make a graph plotting the different NPVs at different rates of discount and this is called the NPV profile. NPV profile, don't worry too much. I'll do one thing. We'll discuss NPV profile <coughs> separately in this particular module. We'll take it as a topic of its own. Okay? It's nothing but a graph which will show different NPVs at different uh, discount rates. Here you saw, no, it was different. One was 4,000 something. The, if it's at 10%, it was 26 something NPV. If it, you take discount rate as 20%, it was only 4,177 dollars, right? <clears throat> what are the assumptions? NPV is based on two assumptions. One of them is that the cash which is generated by a project is immediately reinvested to generate a return at a rate that is equal to the discount rate used in the present value. This is, this is one of the basic assumptions to this. When you are calculating, this is the assumption that whatever returns inflows you are getting, you are actually putting it back into the project or wherever you are, it, it is being reinvested at a rate of at the same rate as the discount rate. That is one basic assumption of the net present value. And the other one is that the cash flows during the years except the initial outlay occurs at the end of each period. The cash flows during the years except the initial outlay occur at the end of each period. Advantages. It recognizes the time value of money. It considers the cash flows of a project in its entirety. And the NPV represents the contribution to the shareholders' wealth. So, of course, this you know it recognizes because you are looking at the at the discounted cash flow methods. It recognizes the time value of money. And unlike the payback method, here it looks at all the returns. Payback, you remember, it was only looking 
till the money is recovered they don't look at the returns after that right and of course if this is one calculation i get what is this net present value it is actually the contribution to the shareholder as well because it got a certain cost of capital this return is more than that and that is the addition to the shareholder's wealth what is the limitation of the npv it is more difficult to calculate because each future cash flow has to be discounted to its present value obviously that is one of the disadvantages now when two projects have different lives the npv method by itself will not be satisfactory this also we will discuss later correct that's another problem what is the discount rate that becomes a little arbitrary you want to take a 10% 12% 15% that is big, slightly difficult it's it's a, it's a, it's arbitrary it's it's theoretical i mean we compute but we may, may not be i mean uh, there is an element of um, subjectivity here when you arrive at the discount factor the assumptions about future events may not be reliable nothing can be done we make the most intelligent uh, rational decisions that we can based on whatever information we have the results are in absolute dollar amounts does not indicate the actual rate of return there is no rate of return as such i don't know what is the rate of return i know it's a positive npv or a negative npv but i do not know the rate of return right not very serious uh, serious limitations so this is the most popular method actually used for uh, for evaluating capital investment decisions